Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let us go through RAID. RAID is nothing but redundancy array of independent disks or previously they used to call as redundancy red, sorry, redundant array of inexpensive disks guys. So basically this technique was initially used and even it is used nowadays it seems. So initially it is used when the hard disks or the disk cost is really high. When you are trying to buy a 1TB hard disk, it's really high. It's not 1TB, it's a bit larger. 10TB, 20TB like that hard disk, if they are so expensive. So we can use the concept of RAID and we can combine those hard disks and we can use the storage space in an efficient way. Fine? So RAID or redundancy array of independent disk is a technique which makes use of combination of multiple physical hard disks. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Instead of using a single logical hard drive. So instead of using a single, we'll be using two to three, the, but the result will be the same. So if we use this, there are many advantages guys, because the accessing time will be reduced. We can have multiple copies so that we can have backup and there are many advantages. So ride increases the performance and data redundancy. So multiple copies for backup, basically it's not a problem. We are having it for our advantage. So rights are in different levels, rights level 0, level 1, level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5 is also there, 6 is also there and level 10 is also there guys. Fine. Okay. So we'll be going through the explanation from for each and every level. Don't worry. Okay. So basically in level 0 here we divide the data into strips. So basically let us assume that these this is our hard disk layers. So we'll be dividing the data into particular strips. So write zero will be having a one. So let us assume that you divided the program or a file a into six parts. Okay. Let us assume six parts. So a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, a six are the parts. So the even numbers you'll be store, so odd numbers you'll be storing in the disk, in this disk and even numbers you'll be storing in this. So this increases the performance, but the only disadvantage in this is if a particular disk fails, then you cannot retrieve the data because this will also be of no use. What if you are having two backups? So here 1, 2, 3, 4, here 1, 2, 3, 4. Then if this is failed, this can be saved, right? So that is nothing but the level 1. We'll be going through it, don't worry guys. So in this, the only drawback is that if one disk fails, the accessing will be really complex so that we'll be having only half part, right? So, the, so that we cannot use it. So this increases the performance. So basically if you ask me this A1, A2, those are nothing but bits guys. Those are, they, these are nothing but collection of bits. Okay. So write one. So I told you, right? So if there is a copy, it will be an advantage. So they understood that and they made this write one. So here we copy the data of first disk to another disk. So this increases the rela reliability. Reliability is nothing but it reduces the loss of data. So that's nothing but reliability. So right one, it is having the same way A1, A2, A3, A1, A2, A3. So if this, this disk is collapsed with some issue, we can retrieve the data from this. We can use it endlessly. We can use it happily, right? So this is nothing but right one. Whereas in right two, here we use error correction. So basically instead of wasting the whole disk to store the same disk again, here we are using in right two, they, they understood the main use and they started trying to use hamming codes and error detection codes guys. So here we use the error detection codes like yeah, hamming code. We split the data into bitwise among the disks. So instead of storing the uh, some particular 4 bit or 16 bit or 8 bit string or 8 bit binary values in a particular area, instead of that we'll be dividing it into whole bits separately. Bitwise among the few hard disks while the rest are used for storing the error correction code. So here in write 2 we are having a1, a2, a3, a0, a0 one, a0 two and a0 three. So these three are nothing but your error correction codes and these three are the bits. So we are here we are using six disks guys in total. So we are using six disks means this is indirect it is really expensive when we compare with everything. So even though it's it showed some effect or power in in rectifying the errors and everything but it's really expensive so that is the reason why write 3 came into play so instead of instead of using that many codes that many storage for error detection code here we will be storing it in a single disk so as in write 2 instead of error correcting codes we use here okay sorry here we use parity guys in a single row in a single 
in a single disk. So basically A1, A2, A3 are the again the same bits which we have discussed and this is this will be your parity code that is nothing but XOR, XOR of these three things. So that will be stored here so that if any changes occurred with some errors or any kind of bugs we can rectify by using this parity code. So the question is that what if this parity code has been damaged or it, or it has been removed or two things were removed. That will be an issue, right? So that's the reason why write 4 has come into play. So similar to write 3, here we divide the data block in data wise. Fine. So here if you observe carefully, we here we are having AP, BP and CP. Previously, we used, used to have 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 1, 2, 3. We used to have 3, 3 bits for that parity. But here we will be having only single bit. And with that, we can do the everything. So this is write 4. But the main issue that if two disks have been crashed, what will be the issue? So to rectify that, the write 5 came. In write 2 and write, sorry, in write 3 and write 4, we store the parity in a single disk. If any issue with that disk, then we cannot... We can lose the data and we cannot back up the data. Hence, parity data is divided evenly within the within the disks. So, if you observe here carefully, our parity code is here, guys. I have just highlighted them. Just I am just highlighting for you again. Okay, so there we are storing the parity. So, if you if this disk is failed, so unfortunately, let us assume the disk this disk is failed, then we can have a1, a2, a3, a4. We are having the whole string b1, b2, b3, bp. This is parity. So with the help of parity, we can find b4, right? So in that way, it will help. But if even in this situation, if two disks fail, that will be an issue. Fine. Okay. But this is more reliable when we compare with RAID 3 and RAID 4. Okay. So I hope everyone got a small idea on this. Further moving on to RAID 6. Here, we use two disks for parity. Okay, so again here also they, they, those are evenly shared and this also increases the reliability guys so that the errors can be rectified really easier and faster. So here if you observe, we are having parity as P and Q, AP, AQ, BQ, BP, CP, CQ, DP, DQ, D, EQ, AP. So we are having two two parities. So here also we will be assuming the maximum disk failure only for two guys. If we assume here also for three will be getting write 7 so in that way there are multiple writes so after that write 10 is also important so write 10 will be in this format guys it is a combination of write 0 and write 1 whereas write 0 is nothing but write 1 plus write 1 and write 1 is nothing but write 0 write 0 so we'll be writing in this format write 1 plus 0 is write 0 write 0 is divided into write 1 and write 1 so you know write 1 format right so write it in that format Similarly, write 1, write 0 plus 1 is nothing but write 1. So, write 1 means write 0, write 0. So, write 0 is format. I hope everyone knows that. Write it in that format. So, in this way, the writes are divided and these increases the performance of your system. So, I hope everyone got a small idea on this. So, in the next tutorial, we will be starting the different, we will be talking about the differences between polling and interrupts, guys. Guys, this IO systems we have already discussed in some other subjects. So, if you want, you can refer the notes. It is almost the same topics which I have covered, like DMA, input output devices, and everything. So, in the next tutorial, we'll be going through polling and interrupts. So, let us meet in the next tutorial. Thank you. Thanks for watching.